Creative Katie Karen Virgil here. Welcome to my channel. Today, a how to video removing and replacing journal coils. I work in the Canson Mixed Media Art Journal. It's coiled. I also make custom covers for notebooks that I buy at the dollar store. I fancy them up and then I sell them at craft fairs. And that's why I started to take the covers off the coils. More recently, I started taking the pages out of the Canson Mixed Media Art Journals, out of the coil system. And this allows me to work on a flat surface, which is absolutely wonderful. You're not working on the pile of finished papers and you're not running the risk of getting paint or any mediums on the completed pages. So in this video, you're going to see me put together these pages, put them back in the cover that I've finished. But first, let's take apart this one. I'm getting this one ready. This is a 7x10. The 7x10 Canson Mixed Media and the 9x12 are my preferred sizes. So we're going to open it to the back. And very gently, you are going to pull these coils. The pages are held in at the back. And you may want to help yourself out by taking a picture to remind yourself what the back looks like at the end. So back to moving these coils. You're going to open it up, but you don't want to open it too far. You don't want to bend them. You want to keep them as close to the original as possible. Now, what comes off first is the back cover. And that's what you see me removing right now. And I've only opened those coils enough, really, to get that cardboard out. When I do my custom covers, I tend to complete both the front and the back cover. So both of those need to come off. Here's an idea. Keep track of the order that they come off. Back cover front cover, and then the pages. When we go to assemble this, of course, we're going to reverse the order. So the back cover is off. Now I'm just moving this through and removing the front cover. Patience is key. Now, if all I wanted to do was do the covers, I don't need to take out the insides. But because for the journal purposes, I want to use these and work with them on the flat surface, I'm removing everything off the coil. When I do my custom covers for just notebooks, I leave the papers on the coil. I'm removing about three to four pages at a time. Now, taking the pages and the covers off the coil is way easier than putting them back on, as you're going to see. You want to be careful not to rip any of these pages. Now, I tend to look for the best bargain. So when I buy the Canson Mixed Media pieces, page or journals, I like to get the bonus pack that has 72 pages, not 60. But you'll find that once you've done all the mixed media on it and all the layers, you won't fit all the papers that are in there. So some of those papers I use to make embellishments, I use for other purposes. Now the other thing that I'm writing down here is that on each page, the front of the page, there's an indentation there. And I'm just writing that down to remind myself that that's the front of the page, it's just going to fit in better later on. So once all the pages are out, I'm glue putting them all together, sandwiching them between the front and the back cover, and closing with a bulldog clip. And then these are kept close at hand. I can grab them, put leftover paint or mediums on them. Now let's talk about putting it back together. So we're going to reverse. The pages are going to go first, 
then the front cover, then the back cover. Now, when you're starting this off, it's pretty tricky. It's a little flimsy. If you have an extra pair of hands here to hold down the coil, that might help. So the pages are going first. You're not going to want to try to put more than two or three pages in at a time. And you're going to slide them in throughout the whole thing. Multiple attempts to get it to go. When it goes, it goes easy. And when it fights you, it just seems to fight you. Now, what you're putting in is going at the back of the journal. So if you have a preference for the order, you're going to have to pay attention to what you're putting in first. What you put in first is at the back of the journal. What you put in last will be at the front. Once it gets in, you're going to make sure that every one of the perforated edges fits in the coil. Once you get a few more pages, a dozen pages, it seems to stabilize the coil and it gets a little easier. But because these pages have been, you've got product on them, they've been wet, they're a little bit warped, it's a little tougher than if they were just plain papers. Patience is a virtue here. Now this part, I warn you, I'm doing wrong. Now my pages are only done on one side. That's my choice because if I want to frame this, I can do that. Or if I wanted to throw one away, I can do that and I don't have something nice on the other side. It's just my preference. So you'll note right here that the page is facing up. And can you see the problem with what I'm doing? Here I'm just so happy. Oh, I finally got it in after battling with it. And then I realize that the pages are upside down, backwards. So if you have only done one side like I have, you're going to want the picture down, the blank side up. Slide it through the coils, get them in place. Look how easy that one went in. And flip it. Take the time to check that the pages are facing the right way. When you, It's easier to remove three pages than it is to have to remove the entire thing and do start all over. You're also going to need to take stock of where the top of the page is. On my case, the top of the page is on the left-hand side. So I want to, even before I get all the pages, I've sorted them, organized them in the order that I want. I want to make sure that they're all facing the right way. Already, now that there's almost a dozen pages there, it's becoming a little bit easier to put the pages into the coil. It's weighed down. It's hold, the, the weight of the papers that have, are already in the coil are holding it down and stabilizing it. Keeping it snug against the back seems to help. But no matter how good you get at this or how many times you've done it, sometimes you just need to do it several times before it just all falls into place. Checking the pages and getting ready to put more in. Because there's so many excess papers, almost double the paper pages that would actually fit in there comfortably, I wonder if you can buy just blank coils. I need to look into that. If you know, leave me a comment in the description box below, in the comment section. I'm sure you can, because I know there are punches where you can punch 
this kind of page. I kept this video real time and I'm showing the entire process so you get an idea of how long it takes. Now I've done several of these and it just still takes time. Slow and steady wins the race. Can't tell you enough, check the pages. Make sure that the top is at the top and they're facing the right way. They're exactly how you want it. What's the first pages you put in are in the back. The last pages you put in are at the front. I've so thoroughly enjoyed working on these pages once I've taken them out of the coils. It just made everything so much easier. Once you get going with the coiled book, it tends to get bulky and cumbersome. Plus, it's easier to film a video when it's off the coil. I will be filming a video of the final flip through of this art journal. I think all told I put, because I used a lot of pages to make other things, there's only about 30 pages that are in this coil and it fits comfortably. So that's like half the pages. So to recap, when you're doing this, take a picture of how the coil looks at the back. Any book that is coiled this way, you can take apart and put back together. Be you buy it at the dollar store, Walmart, wherever. And you can customize your covers or turn it into a art journal paint book. I have videos where I show how I decorate the covers. If you're in my YouTube channel, there is a search bar in my channel and you search there, journal covers, they will come up. There we go. So now we have all the pages. The last page in is the front of the book. So now the front cover goes on. And there's the cover that I did. And there is a YouTube video that shows me creating this cover. I could have painted the inside of this. And when I do custom covers, I do that. I don't typically do it for my art journal books. I don't do the back either, but I could. So the front cover goes on and then the back. You roll, push that to the front, oops. And then you want to very carefully press the coils back together. So here's why you don't want to open them up too widely because then you have more bending. You don't want to distort the shape of the coils, especially if you're making custom covers to sell. 
test it out by putting the back cover on, getting everything where it should be. When you close it, it shouldn't come out easily. It should be tight enough that it doesn't slip out. If it slips out when you do that, you just have to press it together just a little bit more. A little bit at a time. Don't get too heavy handed. And there we have our put together art journal. Thanks for joining me. I hope you give this a try. Bye for now.